Hey, what's up, everybody? Thanks for listening, and welcome back to another episode of the Business Owners Freedom Formula Show, where we chat with inspiring entrepreneurs and dig into their highs, lows, and everything in between of their business building journey and learn about how they've been able to achieve ultimate freedom. In today's episode, episode number 22, we have another great guest with us here today, and we are going to get started right away. We have Jimena Cortez. She is a marketing consultant specializing in LinkedIn lead generation. She is a published author, international speaker, and entrepreneur, and the founder of Wizard Media and LinkedIn or Linked Blueprint. Wizard Media helps businesses leverage search engines and LinkedIn to get more clients. Jimena has taught over 4,000 people worldwide how she gets multi-million dollar companies as her clients by using LinkedIn. She has helped several companies add an additional six figures to their bottom line using her marketing strategies. She has been mentioned on Inc.com, Entrepreneur.com, and Forbes, just to name a few. So, without further ado, that is Jimena Cortez from Wizard Media. Welcome, Jimena. How are you today? Hey, I'm good. How are you doing? Doing well. Thank you so much for being here. Really excited about this because, uh, as we were talking before we got started, was LinkedIn is not normally the top thing that people think of when it comes to lead generation. Everyone talks yeah. Facebook ads, and even if you're following, you know, other social media leaders, they say Instagram and Snapchat. Uh, so how did you get started with your entrepreneur journey and how did that lead to uh, building a business around LinkedIn? Um, well, the, the whole LinkedIn thing happened really by accident. And you know what? You're right. Most people are talking about Instagram, Facebook ads and all these things, and they're highly effective, but it really depends on what kind of business you have. So for some businesses, for example, like a lot of the clients that we work with uh, right now are in the medical space, right? So to get, you know, the CEO of a hospital to buy your medical devices, running a Facebook ad is not really going to cut <laughs> it. So, uh, and it's, you know, a, a sale that's worth, you know, thousands, sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars. So when you're dealing in that sort of environment where the, per the person that you need to connect with is uh, really high level, is usually very difficult to get a hold of, um, the way that, that we've developed the system over time to get that person's attention and get them on the phone to discuss doing business, um, it works best on LinkedIn uh, because people are there for business and they're usually pretty high caliber people. Uh, you know, the, the way that I got started was, um, you know, I've been in marketing since I believe it's 2008. <laughs> uh, I was working for other companies at, at that point and, you know, 2009, I kind of started dabbling into SEO and, and taught myself that. And then uh, by 2012, I was tired of working for other people, so I decided to start my own business. And um, at that point, I was really good at SEO, but I was not very good at getting clients because, <laughs> you know, just because you can rank a website doesn't mean you can close a deal. So, you know, six months go by, I'm going, you know, to business networking events, I've quit my job, I'm trying to make this thing work, I've got, you know, unemployment for a few months, so I, that could hold me <laughs> over. <laughs> and that started to run out. Um, and I'm doing everything I can to get clients and it just wasn't working. Six months go by and you want to guess how many clients I got in that period? Zero. Gee, one. thanks. <laughs> no confidence at all. No, I got one, okay? One. Uh, well, one is more than zero. Well done. <laughs> yeah, but one was not really going to pay the bills. Um, and so I started to look for a job again and LinkedIn was one of the sites I was using to you know, look at listings and stuff. Um, and I'm noticing that the people that I wish were hiring me for my services at the time were doctors and lawyers that I still work with. Um, you know, there's like thousands upon thousands upon thousands of them on LinkedIn. So I'm looking for jobs, but I'm connecting with people. And within two weeks of doing that, talking to attorneys, sending them content, letting them, giving them advice really is what I was doing. Um, one guy you know, signed up. He's still my client today, five years later. <laughs> Um, and then from there I was like, well, that was way easier than everything else I was doing. And I didn't have to leave my house and you know, I'm sitting here <laughs> in my pajamas talking to these people. Um, and that's how I grew my business. And so, you know, then in 2014, a lot of people were asking me like, what I would do, what I was doing, how I was doing it. And that really led to, uh, I created an online training program where people can learn, you know, how to do this yourself on LinkedIn. And then we also developed a, like a done for you and done with you service as well out of that. So my company you know, still, does, still does search engine optimization and we also do a lot of LinkedIn. We're more known for the LinkedIn because not a lot of people really do that. And there's a ton of SEO companies out there. So, <laughs> Wow, very cool. I mean, that's a very interesting story in the sense that you weren't even, you were using it to try and find a new job and then all of a sudden you found that it was 
generating you crazy leads, um, right. which I think for, I mean, even for me, I, to be honest, I've, I have it to really just kind of, you know, put my resume there, what I've done, all of the experience and get some, you know, get some PR from other people promoting you, that type of stuff. So how can people, if they're just owning a local business, you know, obviously there's a, there's a method to this. You can't just start spamming people. No. Where do you see the <laughs> biggest value in starting that conversation with somebody where you're not turning them off right away? Cause I know even me personally, a lot of times yeah. I'll get messages from random people on LinkedIn and it's just completely salesy. Um, yeah. and that doesn't, I don't even reply and I don't even accept their connection. So how do, how do you recommend? Cause a lot of people can use this to, you know, find leads because it's really easy to search for job titles and locations and all that. But how do you recommend people kind of initially reaching out to people? Yeah, well, you know, you hit on a great point right there. And that's why pe most people say, oh, LinkedIn doesn't work or social media doesn't work. It's not that it doesn't work. It's that your strategy is wrong. Like, yeah, of course, if you're going to send somebody a message talking about all the stuff you can do and if they'd like to buy, the answer is going to be no. Even if they would have <laughs> liked to buy, they're not going to buy because you did it wrong. Um, so I always tell people it's, it's all about... Uh, saying the right things in the right sequence to the right audience. So everything that we do for our clients from how we write the profile, the copy, the wording that is used there, it's very targeted to the specific market that you're going to go after. Because, you know, the profile, is, it's not just your resume, it's your sales letter. People are going to read that and they're going to make a decision whether you're somebody they want to connect with and do business with or not. So you have to use language that's going to subconsciously pre-sell them into wanting to talk to you and work with you. So, you know, that's really step one. After we have the connection from that person, then it's a matter of not spamming them and really just giving advice and showing your expertise. You can do that through content and asking for their feedback. That's usually how we'll start off any conversation. And then after that, you know, we'll send a series of messages where we talk about, you know, hey, you know, this is what I do. I think maybe there's synergies and that's working together because I do this for, for your kind of industry or whatnot. And then some people will say, yeah, you know what, let's talk. And other people will say, you know what, I'm not interested and that's fine. But just doing it that way and, you know, having the, the, the right sequence and the, the right wording in place for that audience, we're getting anywhere from you know, 10 to 20 appointments per month, you know, per profile that we're managing. And we're talking about, we're not reaching out to just anybody. These are like really high level people. Like I was telling you, like hospital CEOs and doctors and you know, all that kind of stuff. Wow. That's fantastic. Well done there. Um, and definitely we're all about systems on here. So I really like that you do have an actual system in place that people can follow. Uh, and it's obviously repeatable. So when you scale yeah. your business, uh, you can either do more of it, you can help other people do it. Um, so you said m mainly your, your, your clients are, uh, lawyers, doctors, that type of thing. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. I mean, we also work with, I mean, we work with so many clients now. Um, we've got some coaches and consultants and marketing companies and healthcare companies. Um, what else do we have? Food companies. So, <laughs> so you're building a big, how many people are on, obviously you're, you probably have a team in place as well. So how many people do you, uh, do you work with? Yeah. Right now we have seven, excluding myself. Awesome. That is exciting from, five years ago when you were just searching for a job and I got a team of seven people and you build this business. So <laughs> yeah. well done there. Um, and that I think for our listeners, even if you're a small business owner out there, the value of not only reaching out to people, but the value of what you said, it's not just your resume. It's a opportunity to build that know, like, and trust factor by making yeah. it kind of your sales page of what you do and how you can serve people. Um, so when people are putting together, cause you know, in my opinion, what I've seen was once people become kind of a business owner, they kind of neglect that LinkedIn profile. It's like, well, I don't need a job yeah. anymore. I'm my own boss. Right. So what would you recommend to those people that, you know, kind of forget about LinkedIn once they are their own boss? Well, you have to think about, you no, know, especially when you're in business, because, you know, it's not just you and like your business in a corner The people make up your business. It doesn't matter, you know, at, at what role, for example, there's people that work for you. You know, that's, that's one role. There's people that buy your products and services. That's probably the most important role. Um, there's people that can, you know, write about you and give you PR. There's people that can invest in your business. And then there's people that can through a joint venture, send you customers. So you can use things that you have to sit down and think about in your business. And I don't care whether you're B2B or B2C. There are people that can take you from where you are to where you want to be. So if that person, that particular 
you know, job title or, or, or the connection that you need is not in your network and nobody can get you to that person, use LinkedIn to get to them. So it's really a place to, to develop and, and, and get the relationships that you need to take you from where you are to where you're looking to go. Love it. And I think that's oftentimes overlooked because yeah. what you said is it really is all about people and relationships and right. your network. And even though you're an owner, you might connect with people that know people that you really wish you could ever get in front of, or you, you know, you wouldn't even think of doing business with that person because they're so much above your business and you think you're just right. a little local business. Um, <laughs> you know, whereas the power of the internet and social media, building that LinkedIn. So everybody out there, go update your LinkedIn profile now <laughs> and do it the right way and reach out to Jimena because obviously she has done this a time or two. So <laughs> with that being said, you obviously are managing technically more than one business, right? You have your online business to teaching other people how to do this, but then you also have your wizard media where you're actually doing this, um, yeah. you know, for other people. So how are you able to kind of manage all that and balance that to serve all of your people to the best of, you know, what they deserve? Um, well, you, you touched on it before, and, and that's really systems and, and, and automation as much as possible. And, and my business can still use a lot more automation, which is something that I'm working on uh, actively with my project manager. Um, but basically, you know, n number one, and then the thing that I struggled the, the most at first was finding the right team. And that was probably the, the hardest thing I've ever done. Because, you know, people will say everything great in their resume and all of this, and then they start working for you, and they're dropping the ball left and right. But they usually start off really strong, so you feel really good about the decision. <laughs> and then, like, about a month in, you're like, what the hell, you know? <laughs> so, um, so, actually, what I did, and this was, this was, like, a huge, like, turning point in my business. Uh, there was somebody that I worked for, like, 10 years ago. And I remember, out of everybody that I worked for, he was by far the person that managed me the best because he, he didn't make me feel like an employee. He made me feel like a part of the company and like I mattered and that he was never um, reprimanding me. He was educating. So that's like the approach that he took. So I was able to hire him. And <laughs> wow. How about that? <laughs> yeah. And so now he's really helped me put together like, the, the, I have an awesome team and everybody that works for me is really on point, really on the ball and I don't have to micromanage and he helps me manage them as well. So now working together, we've put the systems in place that I need to be able to grow and scale and, you know, we're hiring more people, we're doing more things, we're launching a whole bunch of stuff, you know, th th this year um, and, and he's a pivotal part of that because he helps me put that systems and people in place in order to achieve it. You can't do it by yourself. It's really, really hard. <laughs> and, and, and you'll hit a ceiling. If you, if you do want to stay like a one man or one woman shop, you can do that. But there will be a ceiling as to how much, how many people you can serve and, and how much money you can make and, you know, and, and all of that. Totally agree. I mean, that's really what we talk about all the time on the show with the clients that I work with is you really need to build that team culture of, you know, I'm not reprimanding you. I'm not managing you. Yeah. We're going to be a team. We're going to be leaders. And I think the other key thing you hit on is if you know you're not strong at some something, then find somebody that would love to do that. And there's, you know, that's their yeah. strength. When you go from a one man band or a one woman band to building a team, you have to throw your ego aside and find mm -hmm. out who's the best to go. And, you know, if you've ever read good to great, which I'm sure you have, you got to put the right people on the right bus and then put them in the right seats. So then yeah. that bus is going to, you know, it's going to be like a well-oiled machine. Um, and I think that's huge for people to realize that it's okay to not do everything because there's other people out there that can do it better than you. You can't Just, do everything. It's not possible. <laughs> You're, you have your strengths and you have your weaknesses. Just work on your strengths and get other people that have your weaknesses covered. <laughs> exactly. And you will be happier. You'll sleep better at night. And then your oh my team, God, yeah. you, you will empower your team and they feel like they're part of something bigger instead of just your employees. So I think that's, uh, that is really good. And obviously the most important part is you need those systems before you bring those people on. So then they are in a position to thrive and they have something to yeah, follow. So absolutely. So with that being said, uh, what is the normal day in the life of you like <laughs> these days with a couple businesses going on, serving more and more people and putting all these automations and systems in place? Um, well, you know, I, I try to be as healthy as possible. So like, for example, when I'm not traveling, when I'm traveling, it's, it's all screwed up. It's just, nothing <laughs> happens, right? And you but travel home, worldwide, it says. I saw on your website, you go to Dubai, you go to all these different places. Oh, uh, I travel a so lot. So you're busy. <laughs> yeah. Well, so you know what? Also, just uh, I'll come back to the question, but 
you know, the, the whole reason that I started this business and, and, you know, I have a team of seven, but guess what? Everyone works from their house. Like there's one guy in Norway, there, there's other people in Philippines. There's, there's some people here in Vegas, like the ones that, you know, like that, that guy that's like helping me put everything together. And, and some of our social media managers are here, but even though they're here, everybody works out of their house and, and they love it because they have that freedom to get their work done. As long as their work is done, I don't care what they do during the day. They can go yep. have lunch with their friends <laughs> and they can, you know, be in their pajamas. I don't care. Um, but I created that lifestyle because I like to travel so much. And so like last summer, you know, I spent the entire summer in Europe. I did one month in Spain, one month in Monaco, then I was in Italy, Germany, and the whole time I was working. So if, if you look at my <laughs> Facebook, it looks like I was doing nothing. My friends were like, when do you work? I'm like, I work five days a week. I'm just in a different <laughs> location. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's really cool. But um, when I'm home, uh, I'm, I get the most done when I'm home, though, I, I will say that. Um, you know, I, I wake up in the morning, I work out, um, and then I usually meditate on like the goals that I have, the things that I need to accomplish. And I find that when I don't do that, I, I forget what I'm working towards, even if it's just for a week. Like last week I was in Mexico and I didn't do that. And when I came back, I was like, oh my God, what, what, what's the Where whole point of everything? Like, yeah, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what I'm doing. So now I'm like back to that. Um, and then I basically just work pretty much from like 9 a.m. to about 7 p.m. And uh, then I'll either go to sleep or go out to dinner with my friends. I live in Vegas, so there's always, always somebody in to town. <laughs> there's always somebody in town, always something to do. So like, like yesterday, especially Thursdays, everybody starts coming in and getting text messages from everybody. Like, hey, we're in town for this event, that event. Let's go out. Let's go have dinner. I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's pros and cons to that, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I stayed in last night, but tonight I'm going to – I have like – four places to be at tonight. So. Wow. Well, so, <laughs> yeah. sounds like you stay busy no matter where you're at, but obviously uh, kind of leading into our next question, everybody has a different ideal view of freedom. And some, sometimes people's ideal view of freedom is, hey, I still want to work 10 to 12 hours a day, but I want to be able to do it from wherever I want yeah. because I have a team in place. Uh, kind of getting that, that's the gist from you, but what is your ideal view of freedom and how do you make sure that you're achieving that you know, on a regular basis? Um, you know, I, th I think I've pretty much achieved that because I, I am such a, you know, I have such a travel bug. Um, uh, I do need to get my team a little bit more autonomous because they still rely on me a lot for like, certain questions. Um, but that's, that's something that we're working on. So we're doing a, a training day like in-house next week to get more things off my plate. So I, when I am traveling, I don't have to even check email. So that's really the point that we want to get to. Um, but you know, I, I work, why I work so much is not because I'm working on the day to day so much anymore. I'm working on vision. Like I'm redoing all my websites right now, branding. So that kind of takes a lot of mental power. And like if I'm writing copy, which I really don't like to do, so it takes me twice as long as somebody <laughs> else. But at the end of the day, I have to do it. Like initially it has to come from me and then somebody else just kind of polishes it up. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think, I mean, I think I'm at that point. I do have a little bit more work just to get to where I don't have to work nine to seven or sometimes more. But, you know, I think no matter what businesses you're in, I think I'll always be adding more stuff to my plate because that's just the kind of person I am. Like if I have nothing to do, I'll probably go start another business or something. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and that's really, I mean, I think any business owner, once you have that free time, yeah. uh, you've you put your business on autopilot, you either spend the time growing your business to the next level or starting another business because that really is, you know, you're, you're getting a return on that initial investment that allows you to do the next thing. Right. Um, and you mentioned, obviously your team is kind of all over the map, all over the globe. How do you stay in communication with everybody? How do you make sure everyone's on the same page? Skype and email. There you go. Easy <laughs> enough. The power of technology, keep it simple, Skype and email. Um, yeah. That is, um, that is exciting. So kind of moving forward now, um, look, I mean, what kind of, what other projects, what's in the future plans for uh, Wizard Media and LinkedIn Blueprint and all that good stuff? Um, so uh, we're launching a couple of new things. Uh, you know, we have our done for you package. We have our online course, um, but we just launched a done with you package. So there's a lot of people that can't afford our done for you services um, or, but they want more support than just the course. So we're doing a, like I will get you all set up and then you manage, you know, your own profile, but we have, we help you to, to show you how we do it for our clients. So that's something that we just launched. Um, we did our beta two weeks ago. And so now we're going to start uh, hitting it harder. 
Um, and then on top of that, we're going to start doing events. So doing like one event a month uh, where we're basically uh, bringing people into the event and then we'll sell different packages uh, from stage with a couple of other partners. So that's really the new stuff that's going on as well as, you know, still maintaining uh, the agency and everything else that's going on. That's <laughs> exciting. And uh, before we kind of wrap everything up, I just want to get a little bit more on all these people you're working with, just dig into some of the real success stories. I know in your, your intro, you've helped plenty of businesses, you know, add six figures to their business pretty quickly. Uh, just give our, give our listeners a little bit of glimpse into some of the success stories that you've seen, uh, you know, in the, in the process of building this LinkedIn business. Yeah. So, uh, you know, one of our best case studies is uh, it's a medical company. Um, and this is why I started targeting medical companies in, in the first place was because we did so, so great for him. I was like, well, I can do that for other people. And, and we have, um, he, I met the CEO of this company on LinkedIn and you know, one of the challenges that they were having is once doctors would see their product, they wanted to carry it. But just getting that appointment was, you know, they were like, you know, hitting the head against the wall. So um, we started doing a LinkedIn campaign and uh, the first five months um, they, we connected them with almost 1600 of those, that, that type of doctor. Wow. And from that uh, they had, they got an 89 appointments and about half of them signed up. So one clinic to them is worth about $10,000 or more annually. So that's about half a million dollars they were able to add annually to their business just from the leads that we got from LinkedIn. In five months. That's pretty yeah. impressive. That's exciting. So uh, well done there and really excited to watch your business continue to grow. Um, with that being said, all good things do come to an end, as you know. <laughs> uh, and we are all about freedom on the show, so we don't want to take up too much of your time or our listeners' <laughs> time. Uh, want to make sure you have enough time to get everything ready for the day uh, before your friends come in town and uh, keep you busy through the weekend. So. <laughs> Uh, with that being said, it is time for our rapid recommendations for all things related to systems, automation, and freedom. So I've got six topics here. Uh, you're going to give our listeners one thing for each topic to either go check out or to inspire them uh, when the show is over. So what is one book that you would recommend people go check out today? The Millionaire Master Plan. Awesome. We will be sure to link everything up here, as mentioned, in our show notes at paulmaskill.com. Uh, what about one quote that you like to live by? Um, if it doesn't uh, make me money, if it doesn't make me happier, or if it doesn't, I forgot how it goes. <laughs> There's another one. If it doesn't do something else, if it doesn't make me money, make me happy, or uh, teach me something, I know I'm kind of butchering it, um, then I don't have time for it. Well done. So. <laughs> time is your most valuable asset, so be yes. sure to prioritize it. Uh, and if you're not having fun doing what you're doing, do something else. Uh, besides Skype and email, what's one tool that you like to use on a regular basis? Uh, we do all of our project management because we have so many clients now uh, on Basecamp. If we didn't have Basecamp, I would rip my hair out. Uh, it, keeps, it keeps every client, every project, all the communication in one place for, you know, when you have, you know, a bunch of people you're managing, it's very, very important. Perfect. And also, I, I'm going to give one more because this one is, it. this is so awesome. So Hubstaff, um, that, because everyone works, you know, remote. But mm -hmm. basically what it does is whenever they're working, they sign in and they're using Hubstaff. So Hubstaff take screenshots of their computer like every few minutes so I can see what they're doing. So at the, at the end of the week, when I go to pay everybody for their hours, they can't cheat you. I've caught people cheating me on hours. And I'm like, uh, excuse me, what is this uh, one hour set here of nothing Facebook. going on? <laughs> yeah. Or, or Facebook. So now they know that I'm, I'm watching their computer so they don't even try. <laughs> oh, that's good. And then I think that really, I mean, it, it builds the culture and builds the accountability of, yeah. you know, everybody is in this together and you're not just cheating me, but you're cheating your other teammates and obviously the clients as well. So yeah. uh, we'll definitely link both of those up. I've never used that one, but I have used Basecamp before. Really like that tool. Um, what about one podcast that you like to listen to? Um, well, the, the first one I was on that was uh, really big was uh, John Lee Dumas, The Entrepreneur on Fire. Nice. That is, uh, that is seven days a week interviewing an entrepreneur and she, you were on that. Uh, what episode do you remember? Oh God, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, Our, I recorded it last uh, October. All right. Well, we will look yeah. that and we will uh, link that up to show Jimena featured on Entrepreneur on Fire. I think that's a big feat in the podcasting world. So well done there. Thank um, you. What about one community that you like to hang out in, whether it's a local community, in-person community, online community, where, where do your people hang out? 
Um, you know, there's a really cool group on Facebook. It's called Internet Marketing Super Friends. And uh, I think, I don't know, there's like seven or 8,000 people in there. But anytime I have a question about like some sort of tool that I need or some advice that I need, it's amazing how people just jump in there and like really help. So that one's really cool. Nice. Inner marketing, internet marketing super friends. We'll definitely check that out. <laughs> and then last but not least, what is one parting piece of advice for a business owner who out there who is stuck, burned out, or just trying to get over the hump? Oh, so many things. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give three because three is really coming to mind. Right. <laughs> uh, number one, uh, meditate on your goals every morning. It so helps you keep your eye on the ball and, and do the things and add the tasks to your calendars that you need to do to, to hit those goals. Um, number two, I would say look at your numbers. Uh, when I first started out, I, the first, after I started, got, after that, the first six months of like no clients, the next six months, I brought in about, it was like $65,000, but then I didn't, um, I didn't like keep any of it. And I'm like, where the hell is my money going? <laughs> and then I, I noticed that I was paying too much for things and I wasn't watching my finances. So now uh, I'm actually profitable. And ever since then I've been profitable, but unless I kept my eye on the ball, I, that would not have happened. Um, and then number three, take as much off your plate as quickly as possible. As, as you're starting to make more money, uh, reinvest some of that into hiring a team and putting together systems. Otherwise, you will always feel burned out um, because, you know, you don't get into business to work your, yourself to your eyes bleed. You work so you can make more money and provide for your family and have fun. So don't forget to do that. Awesome. <laughs> I love all three. We will definitely get along just fine with those three party <laughs> pieces of advice. So Jimena Cortez, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to impart some of your knowledge, wisdom, and enthusiasm to our community. Hopefully this helps everyone out there get one step closer to achieving ultimate freedom in their business and in life. But before we sign off, where can our listeners go to keep in touch with you? Um, they can go to my website, jimenacortez.com. I have a lot of information there. It is currently being redone, hopefully be done in about a week, but you never know how that goes. <laughs> um, but uh, I'll be having uh, my uh, web webinar on there too, where we go into more detail about you know, how we do the LinkedIn campaigns and results and all of that. Perfect. So we will definitely link up her website there. Uh, th I checked it out earlier today. A lot of great content, a lot of great value for anybody out there looking to connect with people on LinkedIn. Uh, it's kind of a forgotten place where you can go connect with people and generate leads. So thank you so much for spending some time with us. Uh, thank Amina, you. And for everybody else out there, stay tuned for next week's episode as we dive into another fantastic interview with Mark Podolsky from Frontier Properties. And if you like what you're hearing, we'd always appreciate a friendly review, subscribe, and share it with your friends. So don't forget, you can join our free Facebook group at bizfreedomformula.com. If you go to that website, it'll forward you on to our Facebook group where we can continue the conversation with like-minded entrepreneurs who are putting the plans in place to work less, make more, increase the value of their business while achieving ultimate freedom. So until next time, keep rocking, trust the process, and talk to you soon. Bye. See ya. Thank you. Thanks. Have a good rest of your day. You too. Thank you. Bye.